how did you pick that lock? You know, the food lock or the cupboard. <laughs> Spencer had it. You heard about it, eh? <laughs> Oh, bro, he tells us all the time about those things. <laughs> Spencer, you know, he's, <laughs> he thinks he's smart, but he's, <laughs> he's not smart. We just, he used to be strict as on us, like... <laughs> Kia ora everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Find Your Front, uh, official podcast for New Zealand Rugby League. Um, again, I just want to introduce my colleague here, he'll, he'll introduce himself. Talofa, kia ora, my name's Ali, um, just wanted to come on and you know uh, share the podcast with you know brothers and sisters um, that are playing uh, sports, but also hearing their stories about finding their front. Awesome bro. We've got a uh, an esteemed guest today, mm. it's not often you can say uh, we've got someone that's been given the award as the best player in the game mm. at some point, and uh, we have that here today with the great, the handsome Joseph Manu. Kia ora, bro. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, sorry to put you on the spot, man, a bit with, with that intro. But yeah, Joey, like all, again, bro, really awesome to have you here and to talk to us about um, well-being, not just rugby league, uh, and we'll get to some of that stuff soon. But to kick us off, bro, you know. Who is Joseph Manu? Where is he from? Uh, where do you come from? Where do your whanau come from? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm from uh, Tokoro, New Zealand. Um, grew up there pretty much my whole life. Uh, so yeah, I'm really um, connected to there. Um, my mother's actually uh, Māori and a bit of Irish and Scottish, so her family's from up north. Uh, and Waikare uh, and Rafati, uh, so I'm Napui and Atiwai. Yeah, yeah. Um, then my dad's uh, Cook Island, so I'm um, from Atitaki over there. Oh, nice. Uh, and a few villages there, Amuri and uh, Nikopara. So, um, yeah, I think uh, coming from Tokoro, um, there's a lot of Cook Islanders down there too. <laughs> so, um, they sort of call it the 16th island. Uh, there's 15 <laughs> islands in the Cook Islands. And, um, yeah, we call it the 16th because there's a lot of um, islanders that's moved <laughs> over there. And um, it's a good community. It's actually mm. it's, um, yeah, a strong Cook Island community and also a Māori. Um, mm. But really proud to um, yeah, be from there and brought up there. Nice, mm. bro. And so, yeah, being, being brought up there, what was it like? Um, and where did your journey begin with or commence with playing footy in some shape yeah, or form? It was, um, yeah, it was, I, I really enjoyed my upbringing there. Um, like I said, it was pretty small community a um, lot of uh, family there so yeah, everyone sort of was treated the same um, everyone knew sort of everyone mm. so I think it's just around like 10,000 people there so it's not that big but um, yeah you could pretty much you know walk down the will be yeah. walking to school for your mates and one of the aunties will tell you to come in for breakfast <laughs> before school and after school you'll, I'll bring my boys to, to my, my grandmother's house so that's just sort of how it was, you know. Yeah. Everyone's doors are open. Um, it's a big family community. Um, yeah, so that's sort of how I really um, did my upbringing there. And then um, how I got into sport was um, there was there's not much down there really. It's just <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of the um, families came over for, from Cook Islands to do a bit yeah. of labouring in the bush. Um, so they're a lot. They're hard workers, um, and then all the kids, uh, you know, there's not really much other than playing sports or yeah. I guess doing culture. So yep. um, it was sort of our, I guess our bit of fun was playing sports or whatever yeah. it was um, on the street uh, with our mates. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And so in particular, how did you get your start with rugby league? Where did that come from? How did that come about? Yeah. Um, yeah, it started pretty late actually. It was, um, well, a lot of my mates were playing it. Um, mm. but where I'm from, it's rugby dominated. Yeah. Uh, so I played rugby union growing up. Um, and sort of on the Sundays was when you could play uh, rugby league. But my parents, I've been, you know, um, a woman. Uh, I wasn't allowed to go play um, yeah. rugby on Sundays. So I couldn't play any sport on Sundays. So I'd be playing just rugby, rugby union on Saturdays. And yeah, right. I was sort of, I always watched the boys play and I sort of looked at it like it, was, it would be pretty cool to play that sport. Like I looked tough and I mm -hmm. looked like something I enjoyed. Um, but I enjoyed rugby too. So, um, played rugby growing up and then once I got to high school there was like sort of like um, I guess like weekday sort of games yeah, right. like every now and then um, and then I'll just jump in for the team and um, uh, my dad did a bit of coaching there um, he was one of the teachers there uh, and then I just started playing school um, rugby league that was the only rugby league I could sort of play because the rest was on Sundays um, and then yeah so I played there and then my first year um, 
think at school I came up here for the national tournament, right? Um, playing with the secondary schools, and um, yeah, that's sort of how I started. And so you played secondary schools, and um, was that where the eyes really came on, and people saw your ability on the rugby league field? Yeah, I think uh, like um, there's a lot of um, yeah, there's a lot of like uh, sort of recruitment officers yeah. coming Scouts out from Australia, stuff, yeah. yeah, to watch. Um, watch a lot of boys play because it was a pretty good tournament. Yep. Um, so I guess that's how I started. I was, I was like 15 um, and we are playing, it was like under 19 sort of competition. Um, and I was, I was like, I think I just got on. Um, I was sort of like a bench player at the time because yep. I was like one of the youngest. Um, got on and made a little play and then uh, one of the uh, Rooster Scouts sort of seen it and then uh, I was pretty young so he's like, oh, I'll come back the next year and then the next year I was, I was playing all right. Um, I was like 16, just turned 16 so I was playing it right, and um, yeah, he's just, I think he was pretty interested, and then that's where I sort of started and signed my first contract. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so from there, bro, like moving over. Yeah. Okay? So you're young, um, and we know there's a lot of young players that go across, but uh, what was that like? Was that a challenge for you, or did you find it quite seamless? And if you did, why? Um, yeah, it was always a, it was, it was a challenge. Um, I think the Roosters sort of helped with the setup that they mm. had felt like they were really good um like i sort of i still hadn't finished school when i first signed so i got to um i did a year where i was on my i was year 12 so i meant to have one more year um but i said i wanted to stay and do school here um so i'll do um i'll fly over like um, every weekend and play in the issue board comp um and then come back um for school so i did that the first year um, with my contract and then at the end of that year i ended up um, moving over and then we went straight into like a house um which was set up for uh, other players mm. living away from home. I think there's like three Kiwi boys and then a couple of boys from like uh, country towns and yeah, right. out of um, New South Wales and some from Queensland. And then we had um, uh, the Kiwi Kiwi parents, which is Calms yeah. and Spence. Yeah. Calms um, and Spence, yeah. Yeah, which they were awesome. They were, they were like looking after all the boys. And mm. I think that helped um, pretty heaps, eh? Like just having a, sort of like knowing all the boys are doing the same thing. Yeah. And then having... Um, I guess Calms and Spence, which like you know you're you're used to is um, Kiwis sort of yeah. being brought up like that, which helped. So. so there was no chance of playing for the Warriors, or <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> they look straight past me. Oh, yeah, it's really, see, no, that's good yeah, because normally like some of them like you know they, they fall through the cracks or. Yeah, yeah. But in, in this yeah. in this case, you know, they, uh, the Roosters picked you up early, eh? So and yeah. I think it's a good a good insight, Joey, into um, you know. One pathway is not the same pathway for everyone. Mm. And I think opportunities, it's what you make of them, eh? Yeah. So as the new opportunities come. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you being in the house, if I can ask a question off that, when you look back, what do you think are some of the some of the most common challenges you think that for a young guy going across, um, you know, having to live in a house and figure things out? I know you said you had Spence and Calms, but, but, but in general, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges um, having to make that transition? Um, yeah, I think uh, obviously like not having your family there. I was like, I think I was seventeen when I first moved there. So um, I was used to you know yeah. being living at home with yeah. parents and family and being around family, um, and then you get pretty much thrown out into yeah. um, I guess being yeah, adult, moving right? to Sydney too. Like it was a lot different to where I'm from. <laughs> A big, big town, and I had to find my own way to, to trainings, and uh, I was doing like study at the time, so I was like, you know, catching buses with yeah. took it all. There's no buses, no trains, yeah. no traffic lights. <laughs> um, so it was a lot, like I think it was a big difference for me. Um, but I think sort of yeah, that family not yeah. being around that, I guess all the stuff away from footy, yeah, uh, was probably the tough stuff. But yeah, probably the things that helped me was probably obviously. The technology is pretty good, so I can yep. just always stay in contact, um, yep. FaceTime and stuff like that. So, how did you pick that lock? You know, the food lock, or oh, the cupboard. It's been so heard about it. Eh? <laughs> oh, bro, he tells yeah. us all the time about those things. <laughs> Spence, you know, he's, <laughs> he thinks he's smart, but he's, <laughs> he's not smart. We used to, he used to be strict as on us, like so strict. But, but on that, like, do you look back now and see why? Yeah. Do you think like there's some benefit or a, or um, what is it um, method to the madness? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> nah, there was. Uh, I guess he was. Um, yeah, he was. He was doing the right thing. I guess yeah. especially for us 
the young boys we can do what like you know you're young you can do whatever you want um but it was it was fun it was always fun i'm um, sort of messing trying with to help with yeah. him <laughs> <laughs> that was the best though the, the cabinet he used to have the cabinet and he used to lock all our like snacks in there but then on the back we just used to screw it off <laughs> and then grab it grab it out and then screw it back on oh. and every time he checks opens it up he sees like it's getting less and less Not probably just giving uh, the tip away to all the boys now <laughs> nah, that's but, also another question i think because your parents have been on one of the quite a few of the um uh q a with um especially at those new zealand camps yeah i think like their story you know especially come as a parent i think that that was um pretty awesome for the other parents to hear mm. what do you think some of your um what do you think uh oh you know looking back now what are some of the things that your you you thought that your parents did well mm. um you know especially you coming over i know they're, su- they're yeah. supportive parents and really um so yeah what are some of the things that you think that were key um, yeah they they were good though um i think obviously just regularly checking in um they still do it now really <laughs> um they came over f- like a little bit, uh, watched a few games, which obviously is pretty mm-hmm. big, um, come over, support. Um, but yeah, just the regular check-ins, how you doing, um, the, just little stuff like that was, I guess that's all I sort of needed. And I think that's probably all. And no pressure to Yeah, it. yeah. Like it's not really, it's not just, oh, how's the footy going? It's just like, yeah, just right. to see how you're doing and um, if you're still enjoying it and stuff. So nice. they did that well. And so we... You've moved over. We fast track a little bit forward to your NRL debut. Um, what was that like? Talk us through if you can recall. Yeah, making your debut. Yeah, that was um, that was pretty that was pretty special. It was um, I remember that week? It was I think it was Origin. I'm pretty sure. And um, yeah, we're playing Warriors at home. Oh well, yeah, Warriors home. Yeah. Um, but I got to go back home and yeah. Um, yeah I remember seeing it the week before that Origin. Um, I think it was maybe Fergo or someone. If yeah, if he gets picked, then I might be able to play. And right, yeah. Then um, Robert called me into his office and pretty much told me. And I was just like, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I was just like shocked and excited. And then pretty much just got on the phone to my dad, and then he was happy. And then just started organising the tickets. And yeah. All of Tokoro <laughs> packed up eh, and <laughs> came up a, on the bus. Yeah, they got a few buses, and um, <laughs> <laughs> they ended up coming up on the game and. Um, yeah. yeah, it was pretty crazy how like the debut was here in Auckland. Yeah, true. Um, At home. Um, yeah, so that was that was probably what made it um, pretty good. And um, Warriors were a solid side yeah. um, then too. So And so you're about to run out. What's going through your head? You're in the locker room? Oh, the yeah. Just, I'm just excited. Eh? I'm obviously a bit nervous. Um, I was playing on the wing. Um, I was <laughs> excited. Um, and then, yeah, I knew my family was there. So I was like, oh, I was proud. Um but yeah, I just sort of went back to what I need to do for yep. the team. And that's sort of what I was going to ask, bro. Like, what do you do to help calm your nerves in mm. those moments? What is it that Joey Manu, what's his process, his, his thing? Um, yeah, I felt like, uh, obviously that was my first game, but I felt like I've been there before, right. before the training I've done. So I right. sort of just went through my processes of you know, what I needed to do. Um so I just calm down a bit. With you know, sometimes you can get overexcited yeah. um, mm. or too keen, and um, just you know, do a bit of breathing and just calm down, and then um, yeah, get on with like what yeah. what's your job and what do you got to do? Nice, bro. So, yeah. so locking in, focusing in on the you know the things that are your job, like you said. Yeah, really, really cool. And so, um, you obviously play a few games, and then at some point you get selected for Kiwis, right? You get to represent New Zealand. Um, do you remember where you were when you found out you got selected? What was going on um, for you? Yeah, I was. Um, I'm pretty sure I was having a big feed off the family. <laughs> <laughs> we just won the the premiership, so um, 2018. We were, I think we were at like Aljana's in uh-huh. Sydney. It was like a big chicken just place. <laughs> yeah. My family loves it. About 50 of us, and then um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much shouted the favorite people, the family, took them all there. And I just got the call from Madge and I was like, oh, you're, you're playing um, next week. Um, yeah, you get ready to play and stuff. And I was like, obviously still on the high from winning the premiership. Yeah. Um, but I felt like that was like sort of one of my goals and like to play for the Kiwis. And I was like, right, like straight away, like 
I just move my like shifted my mentality of like you know oh, yeah. I, I don't really party but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean I, I was celebrating with the boys yeah. and I was like alright I'm getting ready to play um, for the Kiwis like, I want to be the best that I can be so I just you know, enjoy the time kind of, of winning carbs, eh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> I kind of enjoy their feed too and then <laughs> Pretty much, um, like a few days later, we went into camp. And went into camp, yeah. yeah, that was the best, bro. It was, yeah, and so, so what was that like going into camp? Yeah, that uh, was um, that was crazy. It was like you know, first first time um, playing with like um, some of the the big names. I yeah. think uh, I think Sean was there, um, but we had a pretty young team. It was I think it was like Brandon just came in. Oh yeah, um, there was a few few of us that just sort of came in and. Um, we were playing Australia, so that was like a, a debut mm. against Australia. It was you know, not going to be easy. As I yeah. think they haven't won a few games in, the, in a long time. So, um, yeah, just to be in camp around the boys, I was yeah. buzzing. Uh, I was just, you know, just slapping everything up. But then yeah, like, nice. I knew, like, I'm here for a reason, so I have to do my job. Do job. I don't want to, yeah. Like, Welcome. I can just, you know, buzz mm. around when I can. But Can I ask, bro, um, so you talked about winning a premiership. Mm. Now, first of all, like to play in a grand final, at the pinnacle of rugby league, right? Um, the pressure there that, you know, so I want to ask a little bit about that. What was that like? Like, did you feel the pressure going in to play that grand final? Uh, can you remember that at all? Um, or was it a bit of a blur? But if there was any of that sort of anxiety within new pressure, was there any of that there at the time, do you think? Um yeah, yeah, there was a bit. Um, there's always, yeah, sort of those big games. There's always pressure. Um, yeah, I was, I was just nervous, like nervous. Yeah, I remember we, we, um, there's a hotel just outside the um, stadium. And I just remember like it was loud like throughout the whole day because everyone's starting to yeah. come in, and I couldn't really sleep. I usually have like you know naps before yep. the game and um, just see his people we getting ready. So you know, it was yeah, it's. it's Pretty nervous, but like exciting too. Like yeah. this is the biggest stage, and sort of you want to be a part of that. And um, yeah, I just loved it as well. I was, yeah. well I'm keen and yeah, chomping at the bit to get out there <laughs> yeah. eh? and make it happen. Yeah, because um, then the reason I talk about that, you didn't have a parallel for obviously making your test debut. Um, is the the pressure or the nerves? Is it the same or is it different? Um, it's sort of yeah, it's it's, it's it's similar, yeah, yeah, similar. It's um, I mean, I guess when you when you've done the work, there's yeah, no right. yeah, you're like you, <laughs> it's not really um, like you're not nervous of. Does it give you confidence, right? That you yeah, can, like you you've, you've already done the work, you're 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 good, but it's not nervous nervous of oh, I'm, I don't think we're going to win, or it's not yeah. that. It's just you know, it's a big. Big mm. stadium, it's a big arena, it's yeah. a big sure. game, yeah. But I love having the nerves because you know it's a big game, and yeah. um, it's it's like it's exciting. Like that's the thrill you sort of want to get as a yeah. player. Yeah, but it's good too because eh? then you're okay with it, eh? Yeah, yeah. Like some players like get overwhelmed and yeah, they're like ah, panic. Yeah, so, you gotta you know, enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's you know good hearing your insight. Yeah. Was there any players that you played with? I don't know, maybe Sunny or um. Hargraves that you that kind of helped you, or you saw how they prepared for the game. Um, yeah, I think I've, I was pretty. Um, I guess you know the first grand final I was playing with. Uh, pretty much half the team, pretty much already won grand yeah, finals yeah, yeah, and yeah. been in grand finals. You know, Boyd, Jake, Cooper, mm-hmm. Mitchell, Obo, Jared. So there was just whole experience, uh, experience. Then I was. I didn't really ask them. Like, I didn't ask them because I knew I had to do my job. Yeah, so yeah. I was just focused on what I had to do. But I, I obviously seen what, yeah, like the way they were pre- preparing and that. And it was it was good. They helped me because they were calm. They were just you know we we got we had to do a job. Yep. here to win. So we're not really flustered by the occasion yeah, sort yeah, of thing, yeah. which was good. We just went about our business and um, yep. excited, obviously. But um, yeah, just went about you know, yeah. playing our own style and. Winning, and so how does that? Do you think has how how has that helped you in life outside of football, right? Because um, you, you've talked about some really, I think, some really good and powerful things that you've done to help you in those pressured moments. And I think 
you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that those moments have high pressure. Yeah. Right. Eyes are on you. Everyone wants you to, to do well so that, you know, because it's not just about you winning. Like this, this, we want, we want you to win so we can have a good day at work tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Um, but we don't know you, you know, there's all those things that go on. So people get that sort of pressure, but do you think there are some parallels or well, how has it helped you going through those moments in other things in life and how yeah. you live your life? Do you think there's some benefit in, in that? Um, yeah, I think sort of, I think if you get put in those position, uh, sort of those pressure moments, it's, it's good. Yeah. Like it's something big, you know, that's coming for like, you got to enjoy that, that yeah. moment and sort of embrace it, go after it. Like, I mean, it's, it could be anything really, yeah. you know, as um, you put yourself in those, those moments, you're always going to grow or however you want to take it. So yeah. I think um, there's a lot a lot of lessons there, but I mean. I think what you said before is the parallel, right? Um, yeah. Preparation and whatever you do, yeah. whether it's playing high-performance sport or you work as a teacher, like if you put in the work mm. and you know you put in the work, you can have a confidence that you can deliver what you need to deliver, right? Yeah. So I sure. think that's powerful, bro, and I appreciate that. Um, I sort of want to jump to, so you, you go to, we had the World Cup last year. And, um, you know, we were so proud of how close you boys got. Um, and and so, the, so not talking about that campaign so much, but at the end of the year, you know, a few days later, you get named with the, the golden boot, right? Um, what's What does, if anything, does that sort of accolade mean to, to you? Because, like, again, as we sit here, and I sort of mentioned to you before we got here, like, you know, you're such an unassuming guy. You don't really push yourself forward. You're... You know, um, really good dude, um, really humble that way. What is, you know, what is it like to win an award like that and to be recognised as sort of the guy in the game? Um, yeah, it was, oh, <laughs> it was good. Like, um, yeah, sort of, I think after the World Cup, so we just we just lost and then um, I was disappointed. So like a few days later, then they gave me the call that I was going to get it, so it was sort of hard at the moment to, you know, yeah. like I wanted, my goal was to go and win the World Cup with the team. Like uh, that's my, my only focus was to win that. Um, and I felt like, you know, I was, I was disappointed the next few days. So it was sort of hard like to go straight into that, sure. and like, you know, but then obviously um, accepting that was um, like just the honor. Um, <laughs> the, like the, the names, you know, there's, there's like, I was humble to sort of yeah. accept that. Um, but, I'm more. I want to win team, um, <laughs> yeah. team. I guess premierships is, yeah. is clubs, and then World Cups is country, and yeah. win. I just want to keep winning with the team sort of stuff. Mm. That's the main. Um, that's why I play a team sport. Yeah, really, yeah. you know, that's I'm right, not really yeah. playing an individual sport. But I mean, when you look at, like I said, when you look at the list of players that's won that, you know, a few, yeah. Benji, <laughs> yeah. Sean, yeah. Roger, like. Yeah. And then obviously a lot of Australian greats too. There's big names on there, and mm. um, um, yeah, I'm just sort of humbled by that. Yeah. And are you surprised by it though? Because you said you put in the work, which means you know what you can deliver. You feel confident in that. Um, so does it surprise you? And not in a real egotistical way, but does it surprise you that you could get to the heights of that sort of space within the game if you put in the work? And yeah, like no, nah, I just. Yeah, I think just what you said, um, like I, I said before too, is I've I've sort of done that work. Yeah. Um, and then I just like, I back myself. I believe in myself. Mm. Like what, whatever I'm going for. Um, nice. If I know I've done the work, like I'll believe in myself um, mm. to get something done. And yep. I think belief is like a big thing. Like that, especially when I won that championship in '18. Like. Um, I think I got dropped the year before, just right. before the the um, finals, and I was like, um, like, I was angry at it. But then I came back <laughs> and I was like, did the work, and yeah. then the started that season. I was like, all right, we'll win. Like, just keep saying that and believing in myself. And then I, I was like, I'm gonna like take this trophy back home to yeah, to take. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was all I was thinking, just believing in that. And then um, took that back home and. I sort of told the kids that too. I was saying, you know, whatever you yep. put your mind to, you you, you can do it. Hey, how big was that 20s comeback? Was that 20s? That <laughs> yeah, was crazy, yeah. Hey? That was, um, 
That must have been. I think we're down twenty eight six at half time. Is that one of the biggest comebacks? Yeah, and in twenties I think. Oh well, in the final it was. Yeah, that was that was crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, well, that was pretty cool Is to win that. Just get the ball to Joey. Yeah, how do you? Nah. <laughs> uh, he had really, some good players come through yeah, there too. Yeah. Eh? Oh, we had a we had a good team. We had uh, Victor Sicily. I cracked up. Who who got the winning yeah. try or the last try? Yeah. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. True. He was the man. He was my winger. You mentioned um, about a couple of times about disappointment, right? Mm. And sort of a two part question. But for you, how do you deal with disappointment? You mentioned um, obviously we didn't quite get the get to the end of the World Cup, um, and then you said about being dropped. Disappointing, mm. right? Before the finals, how do you deal with that? What would you you say are some things that have helped you deal with when things don't quite go your way? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think like it's tough, but I f- I feel like um I think um Sunny was like probably a good um sort of person. You know, he was, I, I remember when they I think they lost the World Cup in rugby. Yeah, yeah. talked about um you know there's, there's I think for us as sports is just you know it's just a little thing in our life. And yeah, right. So sort of look, you know, there's more more to it, but like obviously, um, it's disappointing when you lose mm. lose it. Um, but then knowing, you know, it's just it's, there's other things. Yeah, yeah. You got other things, and I sort of talked to him about that when he came yeah. back in um, 20. Right. And he was, you know, we we just got knocked out of the um, finals, and he was the same. He's like, you know, it is what it is. Like you. You just move on and keep yeah. keep getting better. Um, so I think um, for myself, like I take the lessons, mm. um, and then I try and you know don't change my I guess how I sort of treat people yeah. or um, yeah. how I go about it. Like how I go about it, like, um, I'll go about it with a with a good attitude, yeah, happy, yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll learn from it. And I want to be better. Like, I don't want to let it happen again. I'll yeah. try to get better. No, it's awesome, bro. I appreciate that because I think, um, I mean, you're segueing us nice into sort of what I wanted to ask next, which was you talked about football, rugby league as a as a part of your life. It's mm. not all of your life. Um, so what is what 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 are the other parts of your life that make up who you are? Um, not just interests outside of rugby league, but um, yeah, your family. Um, your family dynamic, your makeup, the things you're involved in, the things you enjoy. Yeah. Like what sits outside of rugby league for you? Yeah, obviously, um obviously family will probably be number one. Um, I think just the way I've been brought up, uh, like I sort of said earlier, you know, how mm. um, I was brought up with family. I've always been around family. Um so whenever I get the chance to spend with time with family, uh, you know, I really enjoy that. Got my yeah. wife that I enjoy spending time with. Um, and then I sort of, uh, I've sort of like been in and out of sort of doing like education sort of stuff, yeah. like always trying to, I guess, trying to just learn. Like I love learning um, new things mm. and picking up new things. So, um, that's sort of been pretty good for me and, yeah. um, yeah, just in, enjoying, I guess. Time times, away from it. Yeah, time. Like I enjoy <laughs> playing games. I enjoy yeah. Going to movies and stuff like little things like that. Um, What's your game, bro? What do you game? <laughs> Tell us. Uh, <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been playing this GTA game. Actually. <laughs> but it must help you get away from the game. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. Yes, yeah, I got a, like a good. Like, it's just it's good gaming these days because it's. Um, you play with all your mates, social way. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I play with some of the boys back home, like that I've, I've I haven't seen in ages, and it's just it's just good to like connect with catch them up. Too. Yeah, then you're having fun, you're yeah, doing something doing funny, it. and stuff. <laughs> it's just good. Like I, that's why I really enjoy it. Just yeah. I nice wouldn't fun. really play it by myself, just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. I'll go play with like the boys or yeah, interesting. Someone. Is your wife, your wife, okay with you? <laughs> she <laughs> hates it. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to balance it up, yeah, eh, bro. Yeah. You know the sweet spot. Balance. No, we can get it. the permission. Nah. But just, just on your your wife. I know we had a bit of a talk about. Mm. Um, mm. You obviously got married recently. Yeah. Right. Um, but how how special, and how important is your your wife to who who you are, who you are outside of playing rugby league and all of that? Yeah, she's um she's been 
she's been big for me. She's I met her when I sort of first went over to Sydney, yeah. so she's pretty much been there the whole time. Yeah. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so I think that's probably uh, that's sort of special. Uh, I guess someone that's been there from the start. She's always just supported me, um, and like I said, I'm big with family, so uh, she's like a part of my family. Yeah, um, yeah, nice yeah. I just friend. enjoy spending time with her, and yeah, we, like you said, we just got married last year, so um, we're all really enjoying that. And yeah, you've been a good husband since. <laughs> she like your uh, rock. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give her premiership ring? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> nah, that's awesome, bro. Hey. Um, Joey, look, I appreciate all the insights in, in the corridor and the uh, things that you've shared. I think they're really powerful. Um, but sort of to bring us home, you know, the show is called Find Your Front. And, you know, it's all about us trying to help our communities, not just rugby league, sport, community, people wider than that, to to hear how other people um, hear what they do, and how they think, uh, their insights in terms of keeping well. So if I was to frame it up like that in terms of, you know, how does Joseph Manu find his front in life? Or another way to reframe it is how do you keep yourself well with everything that you've got going on, having to play high performance sport and then be a husband and, um, you know, be a really awesome video gamer. Like in all seriousness, how do you keep yourself well when, you know, because there's a lot going on, a lot of expectation. Uh, what do you do or what is it your process that you do to keep yourself healthy, well, and in a good, good headspace? Um, yeah, I think sort of touched on it, like sort of all over the, I guess over this sort of chat that we had, um, sort of what what I enjoy away from footy, you know, knowing what you, knowing what you enjoy in life. I guess I go, my, I go sort of go see my family. I get to, I try to go home every yeah. year um, just to sort of fill that up, and then. Um, yeah, I always write down, you know, goals, um, nice. which sort of help me on the field. And then I always sort of say, like, I want to just enjoy it. Like, I want to be happy. Um, and I feel like that's sort of my main thing. Like, if I'm happy doing something, then like, I feel like that's when I'm at my best. Yeah. So enjoying, um, yeah, enjoying the moment. I always try to stay present. Um, enjoy it. Be happy. Um, and just, yeah, like, go about it with a good attitude. Nice, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. Any final thoughts? No, once again, man, um, love hearing you, your story, but, you know, just sharing all the gems that you um, they shared that could help someone else. A uh, young kid from Tukuroa or anyone else around New Zealand, I think, um, you know, you, they see you on TV, but just hearing your story and things that make you tick and uh, the mm-hmm. people that have supported you and um, the things that you value, I think, goes a long way. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Wish you all the best for t- – Tomorrow or Sunday. But um, yeah, may the best team win. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, bro, again, um, just to thank you for your time. I know you're obviously on, on, on your team schedule and team time, <laughs> um, but taking the time out to have this conversation, you know, us as Kiwis are proud of all of um, our people that represent us and what we do. But then also, um, I think just as, again, as a, a family man, uh, as a person that loves his own family, uh, we know as fathers, as husbands as well. And as um, children to our own parents, like how, how important family is. So appreciate all those insights, bro. And yeah, we wish you all the best. Um, and we look forward to again seeing you put that black jersey on as well, uh, and representing our country with, with pride in your culture. Um, so with that being said, I hope that's another episode done. Uh, thank you find for your, your time. Front. As he said, find your front. Oh.